And we say that just because somebody is born again doesn't mean their mindset automatically changes. So you is not just the body. Tell me about not just the body. So you know, it's easy to get caught up in the body and you know, how we look and how tall we are and so on, our hair and all this. That's great, but that's not all there is. There is much more to you than what we can see with our natural eyes. There is much more to you. There is a treasure on the inside that God has placed on the inside. You know, one time I lost my suitcase going through Chicago airport. And I was really concerned and worried. Now why was I concerned? I was not concerned because the suitcase, the box, was lost. That's not what I was worried about. I was worried about the contents. What was the end time? Well, the contents inside the box were irreplaceable. My mother's pictures and my great great granddad's pictures who passed so many years ago. You cannot buy that. There's no money, there's no billions of dollars that you can raise to buy the treasure that was inside the world. That's why I was concerned. And I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked because I needed to give back my treasure. So when God created us, He created us with the body, yes. But inside the body, there's much more than just the body. Inside the body is a spirit. Now, you are a spirit being. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. That's who, essentially, that's who you are. But you also possess a soul. Now, let's break it down. The soul, let me see who remembers here. The soul, again, is broken up into three. You, you are a tripartite, tripartite being three parts, but the soul is also broken up into how many parts? Three parts. So your soul is your mind, tell me, will. your will, and your emotion. emotions. I know the name. Say hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah. I've got to take responsibility. That's what, that's what it means to be human. That's what it means to be spirit, soul, and body. You say, hey, we're going to make it happen. God is in me. I can do what I need to do. I can make as much money as I need to make. I can buy what I need to buy, what I want to buy. Because God's ability is on you. God's ability, come on, is on you. Your DNA is wrong. You're born on the wrong side of the track. It doesn't matter where you were born or how you were born. You know, we talked about this this week, right? There are no illegitimate children. There are illegitimate parents. Not illegitimate children. So I don't care how you were born. Moses was born in a place in a basket in the sea. But you're not under a curse. You're under the blessing. Hello? Are you under the blessing? Say, I'm under the blessing. I'm under the blessing. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Coming, in Coming in and going out. And going out. But it's a, mind, see, it's a mindset. So Paul says in Romans, and we're going to go there. Romans chapter 12. Paul says in Romans chapter 12. Okay? Romans chapter 12. It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, say you, you. God's not going to do it, it's you. You present your body as a living sacrifice. So you do it. Then in two, he says, he says, don't be like the world. 
but be changed by the renewing. In two, he talks about the renewing of the mind. Amen. The mind must be renewed. Because it doesn't change when I become a Christian. The old stinking thinking. The old stinking habits of thought don't change when I become a Christian. My spirit changes. If my spirit wants to go on in God, but you've got something else that's pulling you backwards, you try. But this mind still takes you back to Egypt. You know how the Israelites were in the wilderness? And they came across problems and problems and problems. They complained to Moses. Moses, why did you bring us here? We would rather be right now and we'd rather stay in Egypt. Where we ate the leeks and the garlics and the onions. What are we doing here? We're just meeting challenges and problems. We don't want to go to Canaan then. We want to go back. Why? Because the mind was still in Egypt. The spirit was going to the promised land, but the mind, so the mind has to be renewed so that it lines up with your spirit. Because so you can't carry a contradiction in your body all the time. It's gonna tear you up. Yeah, I see you moving around my boy. Definitely coming. Mama, get ready. <laughs> You see, but you, you can't go by what people say. That's true. You can't go by somebody else's opinion. They, they may think you're crazy, but I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. It's going to take a renewing process. Number one, they need to get born again. So their heart gets tender to the word. And then the process, the renewing of the mind process has to start immediately. Because their mind is still in the world. They still want the things in the world. They still want to, you know, still date like they do in the world. Alone. Now they do it in the world. Right? <laughs> It's not clean, they touching and all that stuff. That's not kingdom. Ooh. And no shocking up. Ooh, faster. Faster. Slow down, faster. Slow down now. You cannot do it. No contract, no contact. You gotta tell the guy, no contract, no contact. You're not touching me. I didn't think of show me the contract. <laughs> don't even don't even come close. You know what why God told Abraham to get out of his tent? Yeah. See, God spoke to Abraham and says, you know, you guys are gonna have a child. Abraham is sorry, nine years old, hundred years old, they're too old. So God says, okay, this is not gonna work. You guys, come out of here. Come outside the tent. They came outside the tent. He said, look up. What did he see? The stars, right? And God says, as many as the stars are, so shall your descendants be. He's working on his mind because he was constrained in the tent. He's in the tent. All he sees is the tent. All he smells is the tent. So God says, get out of there. Look at the stars. And each time he looked at the star, when he came out, each night he came out to look at the he saw the stars, what did he see? He obeyed, he's all over the sky, Because right? that's what God promised him. Then God took him to the, to, the, to the seashore, and he says, I want you to count the sand. He says, no, I cannot count the sand. And God says, as many as the sand on the seashore. See, God is using picture to work with this guy. Because he's knowing that they... He's a midhead. We are midheads. 
We don't catch this quick. So he's going to work with the mind, work with the mind, work with the mind. So each time he looks at me, he says, he says, that's what God promised me. He looks at the sand, that's what God promised So it's going to help him to go towards his destiny. But he has to change the mindset. Change the mindset. Hallelujah. So no contract. Come on, talk to me sometimes. Come on, you ladies. You ladies should be excited. <laughs> Listen. I don't expect the gentlemen to be excited about this, okay? I expect the gentlemen to scratch their heads, man. 